is the last of us part one released on 2nd september worth your time in 2022 in short the last of us part one is a remake of exceptional craftsmanship and creative restraint its aim may not be as lofty as other games of its kind but naughty dog hits the mark with one of the most impressive graphical enhancements the medium has seen to date on that note Let's dive in. So the risk of having an opening as memorable as The Last of Us' first 15 minutes is that everyone already knows what to expect 9 years later. The birthday present, the wake up call, the desperate drive into town, it's all well trodden ground at this point. But by some miracle, that dependable crouch of familiarity has vanished in The Last of Us Part 1 and PS5, yanked away by breathtaking detail that refashions every frame, leaving you as vulnerable to the sequence's raw deluge of emotions as you were when you first played it. The hysteria of societal breakdown collapses under the weight of an oppressive atmosphere made more oppressive by cutting-edge lighting and physics. The horror of the newly infected screams, a gargled cocktail of rabid rage and abject fear, is amplified by 3D audio that pinpoints to their locations with frightening accuracy. Then there are the final moments of the opening where the anguish of a father's grief is palpable. Previously hidden nuances of Troy Baker's performance brought to the fore by part one's hyper-real facial animation. In the run-up to its release, The Last of Us Part 1 has struggled to justify its existence. Even as someone who regularly replays The Last of Us for the upteenth time and now has seen this remake through to this end credits, I am not going to try to persuade you that Naughty Dog's latest offering is necessarily worth its hefty asking price. Despite this, there's treasure to be found in The Last of Us Part 1, even if it doesn't have the same pedigree as Naughty Dog's previous work. This remake may not be the most compelling sales proposition for PS5 owners, but it is an intriguing case study for the power of technology in amplifying the impact of interactive storytelling. The video game remake, once a self-explanatory label, now resembles a broad crutch of competing ideas and approaches encompassing everything from simple restorations to revisions overalls. Naturally, this evolution has resulted in a constant stream of contentious questions about the genre's very identity. How much time should elapse before a game is remade? Where do you draw the line between modernizing antiquated mechanics and tampering with the very identity of an experience? And as remastering technology advances, allowing for the effortless enhancement of frame rates, resolutions and other parameters, is there even a future in which remakes are required? The Last of Us ever the poster child for heated video game debate has raised the stakes with the release of part 1 asking PS5 players to invest 70 dollars or 60 euros in a largely by the book remake that brings Naughty Dog's survival horror masterpiece more aesthetically in line with its own 2020 sequel. Many may have expected an all encompassing reimagining of The Last of Us which had already been remastered for PS4 in 2014 but Naughty Dog has instead focused an almost entirely cosmetic update at the expense of any deep and systematic overhauls. That means, at the very least, that The Last of Us Part 1 doesn't hold back when it comes to visual updates. Environments appear to have been dip-tied in lichings of new gen varnish, revealing new details and immersing auras. NPCs that appear for only a few seconds might appear more detailed and expressive than Joel or Ellie ever could on the PS3. Character models that have been updated can now provide a more authentic representation of the original performances from Naughty Dog's mocap stage, revealing previously hidden understated body language and facial expressions that enriched the subtext of key moments throughout the story. Naughty Dog's meticulous treatment of every asset has resulted in phenomenal results, not just in comparison to the original game, but also to more recent exclusive across the entire spectrum of the PS5 catalog. 
There are a few instances where The Last of Us Part 1's identity as a 7th generation title disguised in the garb of a new gen tech spills clumsily into the screen, particularly in cutscenes where awkward animations betrays the authenticity of supremely detailed character models. But for the most part, this is an incredibly accomplished visual revamp. The Last of Us Part 1 is, for better or worse, a remake in which you, what you see is pretty much what you get. This isn't to say that no changes have been made beneath the game's gleaming surface, but their impact on the player experience hasn't been as revolutionary as one might hope, resulting in a steadier, smoother and more accessible play, but nothing more than the sum of its addictive common sense iterations. Naughty Dog has spoken extensively about the updates to Part 1's AI programming, such as basing it on The Last of Us 2's ultra-intelligent NPCs. However, aside from companions now behaving more rationally during stealth scenes, Ellie finally seems to understand that running out of cover right in front of an enemy patrol isn't the best idea, though I never felt like a combat sequence played drastically differently than I remember. I have no doubt that enemies fight harder and smarter than they used to, but I'd be lying if I said that their new behavior resulted in any game-changing changes to The Last of Us' already thrilling combat. There are a few extra pieces of content as well, such as new costumes for Joel and Ellie, unlockable diorama models, and special modes like Permidiath and speedrunning, but these aren't so much essential features of a remake as they are addendums that could have been patched into the original game a long time ago. PS5 specific features such as the use of the DualSense's haptic feedback and adaptive, adaptive triggers are a more welcome addition as in the ability to choose between a performance and fidelity graphics mode which prioritizes frame rates or resolution quality respectively. And while there are a few creative flourishes here and there including some commendable efforts to make The Last of Us parts 1 and 2 feel like a more cohesive whole. This is still a beat for beat rebelling of the game story. It's a shame, especially when other studios such as Capcom are demonstrating how remakes can be used to remix a beloved story for new and old audiences. Still, there may be just as much value in being able to deduce new interpretations from a well-known story thanks to technology that has finally caught up with its creators' original vision. To be sure, Naughty Dog's hypothesis is somewhat self-indulgent, but when you are marveling at The Last of Us Part 1's lavish cutscenes, it's difficult to argue with. Still, one of the most polished and visually appealing missed opportunities of the current generation is hardly an unappealing prospect for PS5 owners, especially given how frustratingly rare platform exclusive remain this far into the console's lifestyle. Before picking up part 1, you should consider not only whether a feast for the eyes is a meal worth paying for, but also whether that meal will completely satisfy your appetite, especially if you have already had your half fill the original recipe. So you should buy The Last of Us Part 1 for PS5 if you're not bored of the franchise already. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep gaming.